Hi, on the woodpecker today, with all the members of my family, I changed the floor at the cottage. The floor at the cottage is quite ugly, especially in front of the sink. Several years ago, I had trouble with the plumbing. The worst is here. I always feel like I'm going to go through the floor while I dry the dishes. Last winter, we decided to replace the floor and put some ceramic tiles here. I even did this to figure out where to put the tiles. <laughs> That's because we only had nine big tiles. The rest of the tiles are smaller. We bought some rustic maple hardwood flooring and since we're ready to install that, it's time to load up the trailer. Yes, before you tell me, I'm lucky that René helps me like that. But that's not all. We also bring more wood for some future renovation at the cottage. We put all this wood in the trailer too. Our daughter and her partner came to help us to finish loading the trailer. When it's well tied down, it's time to drive to the cottage. But uh, when we get there, I have to back down the drive for about 200 yards. I'm telling you, this was not easy. I envy all of you who can do this in their sleep, even on this wavy road. The worst was here, because I had to redirect myself several times. But I managed to get everything exactly where I wanted it to be. All that's left to do is to empty all of it. We were lucky that our son offered to come and help us. Let's say that a full sheet of plywood seems lighter when it's him who carries it. But being three to move the small bundles of wood was really nice. But Frankie brings all the hardwood flooring by himself. Since there are a lot more things to take care of, we still add a lot of other things to do. But uh, maple is still heavy. We manage to move everything out of the trailer and truck, and we rest for the remainder of the day. The next day was all about getting ready for the job. We need to remove everything in front of the counter. Next, we lift up the old TV that we don't use anymore to make room for the stove. Then we remove the counter top. Yeah, yeah. And the counter itself. But it was nailed to the low wall, so I need to cut the nails. Next, René and I hold the counter with straps while our son lifts it. We can't move it out of the way because of those three pipes filled with electrical wires. That's why we need to lift it up. At one point, we even have to use a track jack. When it's high enough, we remove the low wall and put it out of the way. What's the time for? I quickly make a support which will suspend the counter. Then we slide it under it and lower it to set it on top. The next day we're ready to fix the floor. After tracing what I think has to come out, I cut the first layer of the floor, which is plywood. Yes, this makes a lot of dust. But 
But this one, instead of helping, looks like he's bored to death. With the plywood cut, we're able to remove it. It's so rotten that it mostly falls apart under the crowbars. We can see that fixing this is not a luxury. After removing the plywood, we can see that I need to remove some more. In order to do that, we need to move the support. I'm saying to myself that if it's written like this here, it probably isn't much better there. So I cut another section of the floor. I also need to do the same thing here. Now that I'm satisfied that all the planks under the plywood are healthy, I cut them. Then we pull them out. Unfortunately, in some places, it was too easy. After a section is removed, we clean it the best we can. When everything was removed, our son found the markings he did 30 years ago. Some joists are a bit too far gone. I need to glue and nail some 2x4s. But since the outside joists of the cottage are 8x10s, I don't have any trouble with that. It's now time to put our first plywood sheet in place and mark what needs to be cut. For the pipes section, I don't fuss too much. I cut a rectangle. Then with the sheet in place, I mark for the post and cut this. After a last check, I spread some construction glue, put the plywood in place again and nail it down. After cutting a piece of another plywood sheet, we glue and nail it in place. To finish this layer, we need to close around the pipes. But uh, we're not done yet, because we need to take care of the triangular section. The ceramic tiles will go up to there, so we need to remove more plywood. Now we need to fill this up to the same thickness as two layers of plywood. So I need to cut more plywood from the other thicknesses we brought with us. Then I glue all those plywood layers together. I also glue all this to the floor planks. When it's in place, we nail it down. The next morning, we take care of the second layer of plywood. While we do this, René is forced to wash the dishes outside. Lucky like for us, it was all sunny and warm when we worked on the floor. We spread some glue on the plywood, laid the other plywood on top, and nailed this. Then comes the most difficult piece of plywood to cut. Nah, it's not because of the angle, but rather because the triangular part is not at the same height as the plywood. 
I need to remove some wood under the triangle. For this, I made quite a few shallow cuts and removed the wood in between the cuts. Now, we try this in place. Since I'm happy with it, we spread glue and nail this in place. I need to remove the tongue on the floor plank that will touch the ceramic tiles. But that's not all, because we also need to remove some wood so the planks will go over the plywood. Here you can better see what I mean. At home I make some splines to turn the floor direction, but they're too thick. Lucky for me, I brought my old planer here after replacing it. Now I can nail the first two planks. Before going any further, we cut one tile in half. A couple of minutes ago, our daughter arrived to give us some help. Eric, our daughter's boyfriend, is a contractor. He volunteers to put the tiles down. While he's taking care of the installation, Frankie and I make the cuts outside. With Eric's help, putting down the tiles took less time than I expected. We just had to let this dry overnight. The next morning, I have to do something about the height difference because I messed up this calculation. I noticed that it's the same height as the original tile thickness. So, we decided to remove the tiles. The first thing to remove is the two planks I nailed it down the day before. To be able to remove all the tiles and install the new floor, our son removed all the base plates. During this time, Eric spreads the grout. <laughs> As for myself, I begin removing some tiles. As you can see, it's not that fast, because most of them break in small pieces. It's the reason why everyone jumps on the fun of removing tiles. But since the floor will be lower, I need to remove more wood from the planks. But uh, this doesn't stop the rest of my family from removing the tiles. In fact, everyone is having a blast. When a third of the cottage's tiles are removed, we make a mix of a self-leveling cement and make a slope from the rest of the tiles on a width of 18 inches. We think that this won't be noticeable in the end. Then we begin nailing down the floor with the first two planks I had removed. Then we lay one row and keep it in place with finishing nails. Next, with the pack well supported, we nail them down. Then we put our attention on the left side of the counter. The goal is to be able to put the low wall back as soon as possible. When we get too close to the wall, it makes it impossible to use the floor nailer. So we have to use the finishing nailer. 
This means that I can take the floor nailer and begin to work on the other side of the counter. But quite fast, the jigsaw cuts are coming, and I'm the one who's put in charge of all those cuts. Not bad, half of the post is covered. I need to take the measurements for the other half. It's the first time I've used this tool. I was really happy that I had it with me. Now that this post is behind us, we can put back the low wall. And finally, it's possible to put the counter back down. We just have to make sure that the pipes are going back in their holes and we lower the counter back to the floor. Unfortunately, the pipes moved when I lifted up the counter and I made their holes in the wrong place. I need to enlarge the pipe's holes. After that, we're able to screw the counter back in place. After laying down a bit of silicone, we're able to put half of the counter top in place. We also need to take care of the other half. After cleaning the excess silicone, we leave this like that for the night. The next morning, Eric jumps on nailing the long rows of the floor while I spent all day finishing the right section of the counter. As a matter of fact, there are not only 45 degree cuts to make, but also tons of rabbits because of the two floor thicknesses. The last 45 degree cut takes a lot of time. But the worst is that the plank changes height halfway through it. Perfect. At least for this one. All the planks on the plywood are too thick. This means that I have to pass all of them through the thickness planer. Now that I'm happy, I need to glue and nail those planks in place. For this, I use a mix of construction glue and wood glue. Each plank is held in place with finishing nails before being really nailed in place. Cleaning a whole plank is easy, but on every second row, I need to remove only part of the back. This is the task that took me most of my time on that day. Since the back surface of the plank is not really smooth like the ones done with the thickness planer, I glue them with construction adhesive. The planned ones are glued with wood glue. <laughs> Moving the furniture around was one of our team sports. Everywhere was a mess during this renovation. While my family was moving furniture around, I was still making pieces that took time. At 
the end of the day, I was able to see that I removed a lot of wood. All the planks that were near the walls were nailed in place with finishing nails. They will be covered by the base plate later on. At the end of this day, we managed to cover a bit more than half of the cottage. And we continued like this the entire next day. Eventually, I was able to nail back some base plates while Eric was working on another part of the floor. This is the very last piece of flooring we put in place. I was super happy to do it myself. But it was not totally over because we still had more base plates to put back in place. When we were done, we put the gas appliances back to their location. Finally, everything is coming back to normal. The next day, our daughter is leaving. She also brings Frankie back to Montreal. They also offered to bring the garbage tiles to the dump. I was happy because I was not too keen on unpinning the trailer from the pickup. But even if our children are gone, it's not over for us because we still have many things to put back in place. Don't worry, after the kids left, we relaxed a bit. I even brought our new rat to all the places I used to bring the other rat. This was our new hardwood floor at the cottage. We would like to thank our kids who came here to help. Without them and Eric, we would never have finished that job, just the two of us. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.